Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. So today's talk is I am as free as I choose to be. I think that's not what is that what it is? Yes. Yeah. It is it, okay. <laughs> as I let my see, I, you guys were wrong. I am as free as I let myself be. I knew <laughs> it wasn't that. I was testing you. I, I am as free as I let myself be. Because it's all about consciousness. It's all about my consciousness. What do I want? What do I want to be in the freedom that I am as a beloved, beloved child of God? <clears throat> or do I want to bind myself to self-consciousness? Do I want to bind myself to the limits of the earth? And that doesn't mean I want to fly off the earth. What it means, though, is that I don't want the earth to be my master. I don't want my body to be my master. I don't want even my limited thoughts to be my master. One would think you wouldn't want to be bound to that stuff, wouldn't you? And yet, we keep going back to our limited thinking, and it, it binds us. It binds us in our emotions. It binds us in, in our, the next thought and the next thought. Oh, I have to be careful of what? And, and, and yeah, it goes from that. Well, there's all sorts of dangers, in case you didn't know. Yes, I do know, but I'm trying not to participate in them today. I'm trying not to participate in what I imagine to be dangerous today. It won't stop me. Trust me, I'm careful on steps these days. I, uh, because the steps are going to attack me at some point. <laughs> they are going to disappear from out from under my feet on one of the trips up and down steps somewhere. Could just be a simple curb, but I know, and, and you know, and so I tread carefully because I don't know when I'm going to take a step down. It's going to be further down than what I imagined it to be, you know. I, and I, uh, I'm careful on how I talk to this one or this one or this one. So now I'm, I'm careful in another step. I'm walking on eggs around people, <laughs> and that's uh, because I'm afraid the egg will break and we will be in conflict. And, and it's like, and what if we are in conflict? I'm so safe. I am a beloved child of God. And the one I imagine myself to become in conflict with in the future is uh, also a beloved child of God. <laughs> Yesterday, we were going to a party up in Rhode Island. And I just decided in the morning, I didn't predict any catastrophes happening. But I, my prayer as I, when I got in the car was, <clears throat> Holy Spirit, tell me about today. I am willing to experience today happy, joyous, and free. I am willing to be told the truth, the absolute truth, to that which has no opposite at every moment of the day today. And I wanted that because when I know the truth, then I'm never in conflict. <clears throat> then I'm never, ever, I don't have any adversaries when I know the truth. If you recall the biblical statement, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It was, a, oh gosh, I've gone blank on her name. Old, old, old uh, spiritual teacher. She was the grandmother of new thought. That's fun. Not Emily Cady, it's Hopkins. Emma Curtis Hopkins. Thank you. <clears throat> and uh, Emma Curtis Hopkins said in her mind, uh, scientific Christian spiritual science, she said, if by knowing the truth, one is set free, and one has known the truth, and one is not free, one has not known the truth. Hmm. And so look at, you know, look at that. If you're not free, then you don't know the truth. It's, it's all so simple. And remember, I am as free as I let myself be. And so if I think I know the truth, but I'm not free, that means I haven't set myself free to know the truth. And I, I guess we could look at it. Is there, is there anybody here who doesn't like somebody? <laughs> yeah. I, I didn't think it was just me. I know, we're in TV land, you know. You can go ahead, sit in your bed, your couch, or whatever, raise your hand if, if there's somebody you don't like. And, and the thing is, do you, do you really know, though, it doesn't matter whether or not you like them, except in your consciousness. 
Do you know that you, 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 are a beloved child of God and can't not be? And so might as well take the time to know that they are a beloved child and can't not be. As I say, I, it's, it's so hard to understand, but think of it this way. <clears throat> there are people who like the people I don't like. They have friends. I don't know why, but they have <laughs> friends, those people. And, and so to look at it, so, oh, well, if they have friends, there's good in them. I don't like them because I told my conscious mind not to like them based on what I thought of something they did, the way they looked, who they reminded me of. And so I put myself into bondage over my limited thinking. I, I so admire those people, at least who seem to be free. It seems like they don't dislike anybody. I never hear them say a word against anybody. I never, the party we went to yesterday up in Rhode Island, our host, I only know her to laugh. Oh, she laughs more than anybody I know. She's a great audience, and she's a great conversationalist, and she looks at life, and she laughs. She's also quite prosperous. And... Uh, even when she, I, she was telling us about some hard times that she went through. And I'll tell you, what she told us, and I'm not just bragging here, what she told us got her through a really difficult uh, divorce and stuff was David's music. <clears throat> Nancy Lamott in particular, her music, she said, oh, that got me through my divorce. And now I'm just fine. And uh, she lives a life with her. She loves her children. She... Uh, the, and the child, my goodness, the happiness of these two young adults. It's, 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 I walk into their home, New Yorker, up now up there, and I'm just welcomed. Hi, I'm so glad to see you. They don't know me, well, the children don't know me, and they're just happy. And I thought, oh, I like these kind of people that are not bound. They're, they, they're not, they don't even seem to be bound by their wealth. They just seem to have a good time with it, and they share it, and they make a party. I've never seen more crap to give away at a party. I mean, there are tables and tables of party favors and candies and gift bags. And on the way, do you need a poncho? Because she put all these rain ponchos. We're going to give you a poncho. And, and, and there's hats and there's crap. It's all over the place. And, and I said that to her face. I said, you got more crap here. And I said, we'll go to your other house for Thanksgiving, for Halloween. And instead of red, white, and blue, the same crap will be there in orange. <laughs> and it's because... Life was meant to be a party for her. And, and I thought, I used to, well, most of my life was a party, and I still like to live like I'm on vacation. <laughs> I do. I, I, I talk to interesting people. I go out to eat more than I stay home. And I, I, uh, mm -hmm. and I like to laugh. Because laughing indicates my freedom to me. I am free to laugh at stuff that a lot of other people would not laugh at. And I, it's, I don't care. I try not to offend people with it, you know. I try not to do things too soon. <laughs> but I, uh, I just like to laugh because it's funny. It, there's just a lot of funny stuff. And you know what's the funniest of all? Is our doubts and our fears. We, they are ridiculous. Well, I don't think so, Sean. Yeah, they are. They are our fears are ridiculous. Our self-consciousness is so ridiculous, and here's why. It's because we are beloved children of God. We are beloved in what created us. We are beloved in that we can choose to think we are not free. We are beloved. I, my last my relationship years ago, Pennsylvania, he, he, <laughs> this, I, he taught me a great line that came from television, actually, somewhere. And I, I found in New York it offended people, but I will still laugh at it. If I'd be upset about something, he'd look at me and say, don't be a baby. Oh. <laughs> and I would laugh. Mm -hmm. I would just laugh. <laughs> and, and, and still, I, we could say that to each other. All these years later, we get on the phone, don't be a baby. And <laughs> because, because, and, but, you know, I found in New York, 
people didn't like that line <laughs> because they were upset over whatever they were upset about and they didn't want me making light of it. And I had to learn, oh, okay, don't be a baby is not an effective communication for my people. <laughs> and, uh, but I'll say it to myself. I'll look in the mirror and say, don't be a baby, Sean. And, and I know what it means because I'm allowed to feel how I feel. I don't want to become how I feel. I don't want how I feel to be who I am. I don't even be want it, what I think, as if it's limited and untrue, to become what I am. And so I have to really pay attention to that. I am as free as I let myself be. Now I looked up a couple of things here. Now I looked up the metaphysical meaning of freedom. And I prefer to read it than think I memorized it. And this comes from Charles Fillmore, Unity's co-founder. It says, the quality or state of being without thought or restraint, bondage, limitation, or repression, having a sense of complete well-being. It is a result of regulating one's life according to principle, capital P principle, not according to what anyone else may think or say. Is it okay if you live your life unconcerned about what other people think about you? Is that okay? Could you let yourself be free? And it doesn't matter. It's like, oh, that's just what they think. That's no big deal. Imagine that. Well, oh, that's just what the neighbors think. It doesn't matter. Oh, that's just, you know, that's just what my teacher thought. So what? My Sunday school teacher. Whatever. And let me tell you, as the minister, I have to really work at that one because not everybody cares for the way that I do things, say things, and everything, and I have to, to work really diligently to not take it personally because uh, it's not going to pay off either one of us because I like, again, like I said, I like to laugh at a lot of things. And so if Mr. Fillmore goes on, we can never know the full meaning of freedom mm -hmm. until we abide in the Christ consciousness. Without prayer and spiritual meditation, there could be no concept of spiritual freedom and therefore no demonstration of it. It is gained only through spiritual development gained in long hours of communion with God in the silence. Liberation from bondage comes as we seek first the mind of Christ, the perfect mind of Christ. If therefore the Son, capital S Son, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed. Who remembers what the Son of God is? That's no. That's not right no. Who remembers I've taught this, taught in classes, I taught it in simple word. What's the Son of God? Us. What? Us. No. We are. <laughs> no. <laughs> Christ. Christ is the Son of God, not Jesus. Christ. Christ is the Son of God. That's, remember, God's not a person. We are persons. Yes. The Christ is the Son of God. The Christ is the Son of God. Take that into your kitchen, your coffee cup. The Christ, the awakened part of us. That which we are can choose to function from all of the time if we want to. It's not a... Uh, Religious term, well, I guess it is, it's a spiritual term. And, and what it means is the anointed one. Now, it's not being anointed from someone else. The anointing comes from our own spiritual realizations. The anointing comes from my awakening to my memory of God. Like I've said so many times when we light our Christ candle, that what that represents and the Christ, the Christ, my Christ awakened is my memory of God. The Christ awakened is my memory of truth and peace and wisdom. It's my memory of what God is. It is also my memory of health and well-being. It is my memory of wealth and well-being. And not on human terms. It's not something I can describe. It's something that I know and that I know consciously by way of my super consciousness. There are three states of, of consciousness within us. Uh, there's the, the conscious mind, which is the mind that usually looks at the world and gives 
like my body, the information. But there's the superconscious mind, which is the same as the Christ mind. And the superconscious mind is my awakened mind. And I would do well to get my information from the superconscious mind when I look at anything, anywhere, that I look to the super, superconscious mind, tell me about this. Because otherwise, I'm going to go to the world for my information. And the world, I don't want to hate the world, but the world is full of confusion. The world is full of limitation. And I want to see the world in truth. And so I need to go to the superconscious mind. Because you see, then there's my subconscious mind. And that gets its information from my conscious mind. And so, if I'm hearing danger, 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 and that's what my conscious mind tells, the subconscious mind, then I live a life of I'm in danger. And that's where sickness comes from. That's where the belief in duality comes from. That, that's where all that, that stuff, that gunk, good word, gunk, comes from in our body. And it, the body begins to shut down it, because it wants to protect itself. And when it shuts down, it doesn't breathe as well. And it doesn't function as highly. And so that's why I need to know the truth. Where am I going to get the truth? From the super conscious mind. From the spirit mind. That's why I invited Holy Spirit. And that's a word I use. It's also the super conscious mind. But I like the term Holy Spirit. It gives me a personal relationship with a part of my spirituality. It's still not a person giving me what I'm asking for. What I'm declaring is my willingness to experience it. When I say, Spirit, tell me the truth about this, what I'm also saying is, Sean, I am willing to experience the truth about this. And, and so, to go from there. And so, one of the things I like about unity is it promised health and well-being. It promised wholeness. Unity promised me an awakened consciousness. And I thought, okay, then I am as free as I allow myself to be. It promised me I could choose that at every minute of every day, or I could choose something else. And there was no God that was going to punish me for choosing the something else, or reward me for choosing the light. That God is the source of everything. That God is power itself. So it is the same power that creates joy, that creates misery. It is the same power. So, it's not like, oh, God is the good power and devil is the, the bad power. No, no, no. It's the same power and it's all God. God is power itself. Now, what are you going to choose from the God of your understanding? Are you going to choose life? Or are you going to choose death? Are you going to choose light? Or are you going to choose darkness? Are you, what are you going to choose for yourself today? And I know how easy it is to dip right into self-consciousness over God consciousness. I know as well as anybody, and better than some, how easy it is to dip into the self-consciousness. What are they thinking about me? You know, I haven't gone on, what are they? You know, and I can even go back to the fifth, sixth grade and start thinking about what I know they thought about me and what they were saying. I was like, really? Really? I'm not that person. I'm not that person. And those people probably weren't thinking of that about me. I, several years ago, uh, there was this one piano player in Provincetown when I worked there, and I knew he did not like me. And I knew he did not like me by the way he looked at me. And he, uh, and one night, we happened to be thrown together. We both had the same night off together, so we hung out. And I said, I never thought you liked me. He said, why? I said, the way you look at me. And he said, do I look at you like this? And I said, yeah. And he said, oh, yeah, the light hurts my eyes. <laughs> he wasn't thinking about me. That's really what it came down to. But I knew. So you see, I made it up. I went out into the, God's world. I went out into God's life of me and made an enemy because I judged how he looked at me. I don't have to do that. That was 1985 that that happened. And, and I was so relieved and it taught me so much. It's like, what it taught me is I know very little. I know very little about what's going on in life. And I wanted to know more. And I went on a quest. And that quest led me on a dark path for a while until it led me on a light path. And on the dark path, I still had a lot of fun. And on the dark path, I had a lot of misery. It was all 
self-consciously designed. Every day of my life, I woke up thinking about me. Why not? I'm fascinating. <laughs> but, you know, it's a... Uh, and I went to bed every night thinking about me. Even if I was, had a great time with people, it was how it related to me. And then one day, I was taught more about God and a relationship to God. And that God as source, God as strength, God as power, God as presence. And one day I started because I knew I wasn't just going to let that go, thinking about me. But at the very least, I would look in the mirror and I would say, hi, God. I started doing that. I don't know if it was a teacher who taught me or I picked that up in a class that seemed like it would be a good idea. And I looked in that mirror and I said, hi, God. And I had to smile. And then I, I, and with that, hi, God, I didn't concern myself with how I looked. I had no judgments. Do I look good? Do I not look good? What are they going to think about me? Anything. I just thought, hi, God. And with that, I, I began <coughs> developing a God consciousness first thing in the morning. And... It made my day easier because I wasn't thinking about me, per se. I was thinking about healing. But it was healing to prove that healing was possible. I began to want to prove God now rather than Sean now. But I was willing to be a healthy conduit to prove God now. I was like, oh, if I can do this, then you can do this, and I can be of service. I was told early on in my healing my life was to be one of service. They didn't tell me my life was to be one of drudgery. They said service. And I decided that my service would be having a great life. You can choose that as well. Now, some people, a great life is uh, different than my choices for what a great life is. You must go within and you must decide what your great life is. In my pursuit of a great life, in my attaining a great life, I began to get uh, can attached to materiality again. So I had to work around that. And I, I had to change from the word God to the word love at a certain point because I was trying to get stuff from God. Love, I try to be. I just try to be in love. There, I, don't, I don't have an image of love handing me something like I sometimes do with God. God will hand me this. But with love, I'm free to be. I'm just free to be. So you see, I am as free as I let myself be. When I think of my family now, and we have lots of issues, lots and lots, I don't think of myself as a poor victim of those people. Nor do, and I don't use the, th the thing, they did the best they could. That just triggers me. Because <laughs> their best was awful. And, uh, <laughs> and it was painful. But that pain led to this, and this is good. So how do I go from, well, am I going to live in regret for my childhood? Or am I going to live in celebration for my adulthood? And now every time something that seems to be adverse to my comfort, to my, what I call well-being, to my, what I call security, which means even if I don't like it, if somebody wants to change it, I have to adapt because change is disconcerting. <laughs> and so I have to say, okay, I have to go into prayer and say, okay, all change is good because it's happening now. Spirit, tell me what to think about this so that I don't make up a story. Tell me what, I'm open, I am listening. Remember what spirit is. That's, that's what Jesus said he was sending us. When he, when he, when he, on his ascension, he said, I will send you a comforter. And that to me is the Holy Spirit. And it speaks to me in ways that I can hear it if I am listening, if I am interested. And every time I do that, I get to experience a little more freedom and a lot less bondage to what's going on. So I see clearly it is my choosing. It is always my choosing. I'm going to read something brief, what I hope is brief here. This comes from uh, the book of John, chapter 5, in the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. And it says, the Son of God is free. What's the Son of God? Oh, ding, ding, ding. Christ, Christ. <laughs> The Son of God is free because God made him or her free. The light is free because the light is freedom. 
And then it must be that man is free. Because man is without the light, or is within the light, and the light is within both well, man, woman, child, people. The light is the Son of God, and the light is freedom. If one is to know freedom, one must welcome the light. Do you hear that? What must you do? Welcome, welcome the light. light. There we go. What must you do? Uh, welcome the light. To deny the light is to deny freedom. And yet, because denial is your choice, you believe that to deny freedom is freedom. In this decision, you illustrate the light of your own confusion. Freedom is the gift of God. Freedom is the gift that God extended to the Son, the Christ, in his creation of the Christ. Freedom lies within the light. To know the freedom that is yours, you must choose to accept it by welcoming the light. This is the only way to know that which already is. The light is within you. The light is. The light is. And what does the light enable us to do? See. See. We see whether it's positive or negative, but we shine the light. We shine the light on our mind. We shine the light on our body. We shine the light on everything we think about, which is a lot of stuff. We shine the light and we build our beautiful city, the city that we live in. We build it. It's my town and I build it with my thinking and with my choosing for what I will think. And so today, let us all remember I am as free as I let myself be. Thank you.